maybe up to one week for certain key graphs. Okay? Different time scale. That, that makes it a great challenge, I think, for us to work with the um, with the hydrologists. Now please don't ask me about the difference between lumped hydraulic hydro hydrology models and the one I'll show you in the next. But now as you get down six hourly observed over a catchment area as shown here. So this is what they're asking for us uh, for this particular kind of uh, hydrological model. But if you for the distributed where you're trying to get in catchments that are quite small, and I'm not sure how this compares with the disaster in Iraq, um, but they're asking for hourly forecasts of precipitation on that horizontal scale. Okay? That is the challenge. And of course, to work with them, we have got to work on their scale, on their domain, on the, on the basement catchment scale. Uh, the other thing about Morocco, as we heard, was the landslide. And so to do that, you have to forecast rainfall intensity and accumulation. Uh, the, you have to know the preconditions, whether or not what was the uh, pre-rainfall. I guess in the sense that if Morocco came at the end of a dry period, it, it could have been even worse if there had been previous rainfall. And we have a, a hurricane. Uh, in the United States, which I could talk about, but don't have time to. And of course, the thing which the Central Mountain Range is made up of very steep slopes. If you have a chance to visit them, um, and short lead times. So here's an example of what uh, in the Typhoon Committee, uh, I have a diagram which they call sediment disaster. Um, uh, so that if you, you look at rainfall intensity versus the accumulated kind of rainfall. Uh, so long as the um, amount of rainfall that's been accumulated before isn't too bad, then you can stand very heavy rainfall. But if you've already accumulated a lot of rainfall, even maybe an intensity which is not so great can lead to the landfall disaster. So here's Jinping Lu's conclusion, and I think it's very important for this meeting to read this. Uh, where do they see, the hydrologists see, that they're going to get improvement? Spatial and temporal distribution of rainfall intensity during tropical cyclone landfall. And that's the crucial part for the successful uh, flood forecast, especially characterized by complex topography such as the Central Mountain Range. I think it's very relevant to uh, this meeting. Um, Okay, now, we had some action items from the second workshop on uh, tropical cycle landfall processes. Uh, we have a, a co-sponsoring uh, with uh, this meeting in uh, Beijing, no, in Nanjing. Um, I'm not sure the dates. CP, do you know the yeah, date? Yeah, confirmed. Pardon? The date are confirmed. That's the 18th to the 22nd. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, CP says there's a web page uh, to get more information on this meeting. Uh, CP is working with them for uh, having monsoon rainfall. I want to work with them. I'm on the International uh, Committee. Uh, I want to make sure that we get hydrologists, you know, meteorologists and hydrologists so that we include um, uh, tropical cyclone disasters as well. Uh, I'm going to leave this one to uh, Dr. Nagazawa, because he's going to talk about the Thorpex uh, piggy. So I'll leave that one to him. Um, we're uh, the working group on tropical meteorology, tropical cyclone panel, uh, working with a, uh, another group, which is cooperating with the World Weather Watch tropical cyclone program, and uh, also the public uh, weather WMO. And this is specifically for the Shanghai World Expo 2010 to help um, the Shanghai Meteorological Centers, uh, the Typhoon Institute, uh, 
to improve their forecast, they're expecting 370, an average of 375,000 people a day starting from the 1st of May to the end of October uh, to be in Shanghai, visitors uh, to this expo. So clearly, uh, typhoons is going to be one of the risk factors uh, for them. So we're working with them uh, as they uh, try to improve the forecasting for the Shanghai World Expo. Um, I've been pushing for a, um, an international mesoscale model inter comparison for the Typhoon Simlaku. And the reason I'm pushing for that is because we had an experiment in 2008 in which we had up to four aircraft, including the Dot Star aircraft, flying in this storm. So we, for the first time ever, I think, we have the preconditions. We can define the tropical cyclone circulation before it hit Taiwan. And uh, the key things are, did it loop? Did it uh, get the distribution of rainfall? Uh, a different situation, but a special circumstance. Um, this is my pitch for the International Workshop on Tropical Cyclones, number seven. Um, La Reunion, France, the island in the um, uh, Indian Ocean. And the dates are the 15th to the 20th of November. So we've reduced it to six days. Uh, here are the leaders, directors. And the objective of these workshops is to bring forecasters and researchers together to review progress in both the uh, research and in the forecasting. And there's going to be a keynote topic on tropical cyclone precipitation and flooding. And uh, what we hope to do is then formulate specific recommendations. And I hope to take uh, from this meeting things that are happening here in Taiwan. Um, some comments about where, where I see some research issues. First of all, what's the predictability? Of these extreme events. Um, I heard a talk by Greg Holland um, from NCAR about um, extreme value theory distributions where you are out on the tail of the, I mean clearly Morocco was an, an extreme event in terms of precipitation, but how predictable is that when we're out on the tail of the distribution and only slight changes and either the scale or the shape parameters could lead to a, a, a big change in the, in the tail. So what is the predictability of these extreme events? Uh, track uncertainty, I keep telling you, track is not a solved problem. And I don't think it's a, a solved problem in this one either, because it's the interaction of the tropical cyclone circulation with the central mountain range. 